All right, join us now on Inside TBT. Jen Hale, who right now is covering the Pelicans for, with Fox Sports. But most importantly, she was inside the bubble. All right, so now we got Jen from Inside the Bubble on Inside TBT. Jen, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, guys. How are you today? Oh, we're just fantastic. A great weekend of sports has just wrapped up, and we are ready to talk some TBT basketball. But before we dive into that, um, we know you've been all over the place calling football games and, and reporting on different basketball games. What are you up to right now? All things Pelicans. Uh, we are in the midst of the back half of the first half of the season, if that makes any sense, and uh, waiting for the Pelicans to turn the corner. They're, they're a really fun young team to watch, and you feel like, man, they're right there on the verge, right there on the precipice of making it big. So uh, really, that, that dictates uh, every, every day right now. Um, and it's great because it's such a wonderful group of guys, um, such, such wonderful players, but also great people off the court that it, that it makes it fun. I mean, it sounds incredible. Like you said, the team is exciting to watch. They're about to we're, – we're hoping they make that next jump because it's always better to have more good teams in the NBA. As someone who really has had a bunch of different, you know, COVID protocols experiences, what does your day-to-day -day look like now? Are you traveling? Do you get to go to all the arenas? We are not traveling nearly as much. So in a normal year, um, yes, I would be with them on the road. Everywhere they are, I would be. So every road game, every practice on the road, certainly at home. Um, and this year, that has all changed. We are not traveling to any away arenas. Uh, we can't even be inside of our own team's home practice facility. So I, um, we have a new coaching staff, Stan Van Gundy and crew came aboard. They got hold of the team um, December 10th. That is actually the first time they, they all came together in person. I have yet to meet any of the coaching staff physically in person. Everything has been via Zoom, via text, over the phone. So it's, it's very odd. It is very different to uh, not have those relationships, not have those, um, those roots, those, those friendships that go back, you know, years and years. Because when Alvin Gentry was aboard, uh, gosh, he, he was so accessible. He'd been here for so long. You know, I ended up talking with someone on the staff daily, just, just as friends, just, hey, what's going on? How's your life? So this has definitely been very different. Uh, for games, well, home games, we do get to be in our own arena, but we each have our own plexiglass COVID box that we have to sit in. Because uh, you have to be in a mask, no matter who you are, uh, no matter what job you have, unless you're in that plexiglass box. And we didn't want to wear masks broadcasting on the air. So we're up on the 100 level. I'm not um, on the floor anymore. And you sit in this little box and you watch everybody from a distance. The Smoothie King Center for the Pelicans is one of the few that has allowed fans since the very beginning. But we started with only 750. So it, 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 was, it was very weird. I think I love that we did it so that there were jobs and people could still have some sort of access to the team. But it, it still felt like a practice because it was so few fans in such a huge place. Um, we are up to 2750 now, which still isn't a lot, um, but it's something. And then for away games, we each, we, we go to our own arena. We call it off a monitor, which is very strange. And I, I hate, I'm, I'm grateful to be working, but I, I obviously hate the situation. And we're each in a different locker room so that we can be physically distanced, socially separated. Uh, so yes, uh, really, really odd. It's certainly a season I will always remember. Another thing that was a bit odd was the first bubble that was the TBT. And you were lucky enough, if lucky is the right <laughs> word, to be in the bubble for the TBT for the basketball tournament. We would love to hear just first and foremost, what were your initial thoughts when you got the call like, Jen, you're good to go. You're heading to the bubble. I was excited. I was happy. Uh, my agent called because it was a big question mark, right? Would they even need me this season? Um, I didn't know that I would get to be involved this past season. So everything was, was TBD for so long as they, you know, because hats off to TBT, John Mugar, y'all, um, that you were the first ones to do a successful bubble, the first big organized sporting event to come back. So you didn't have any blueprint. You didn't have any 
uh, best practices. Not that it's easy for anybody, but, but you were working from scratch, whereas now at least all these other entities, sports entities, they have something to go off of. So it was very day to day. Um, things kept changing. John Mugar brought in two experts from Johns Hopkins and, and they were trying to figure this out, right? So um, when my agent called and said, yes, you are gonna be in fact the only broadcaster in the bubble, do you feel safe? Do you wanna do this? And I said, absolutely, yes. Because it felt, uh, first of all, to do my job, I feel like I need to be there on site to do it well. Um, it, it, it's hard to take people into the inner workings of players' minds and plays and days if you're not really there. Um, you know, we, we're cheating it right now, but it's not the best. So for TBT, I certainly wanted to be there for that reason. But also, you felt a little bit like this is history, you know? This is the very first sporting event. Yeah, I want to experience what it's going to be like. I, I, I bet it's not going to be fun. I bet it's not going to be easy all the time. But as a journalist, I want to be there. So I was all in from the, from the jump, from the get-go. Uh, I will say it, it was harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, part of the thing that I personally love about TBT are the relationships. And people have such amazing basketball knowledge. I always tell people, you're, if, if you really love the game, you're cheating yourself to not watch TBT because you're going to see that old school five players working together. It's not just a three-point show – you know, dribble down to the arc and shoot and go back. You're going to see defense. You're going to see plays run. You're going to see uh, the very best gamemanship, sportsmanship. And I love after the games how we would always get together either at the hotel restaurant or a restaurant down the street and just talk hoops and talk ball. And obviously that didn't happen this season. Uh, you were up early to test all the time. I did, I have to admit, I did hate the spit tests. I felt very unladylike and weird having to spit in that cup all the time in front of people. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, you, you could go to the arena and that was it. Other than that, you were supposed to pretty much stay in your room. You weren't even supposed to congregate and visit in the lobby like, like we would normally do. And the restaurants weren't open inside the hotel. It was brown lunch bags for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it was very surreal. And um, I walked away from it, glad I did it, glad um, with a new appreciation for, not to sound dramatic, but really all the freedoms we have. I thought, wow, could this be real life long-term? That would be absolutely horrible. I can't imagine. And yet I'm still in this really nice hotel having meals brought to me, whether they're in a bag or not, but it was so different and so isolating and so um, confining. So it, it, it gave me a new appreciation for everything that we are lucky enough to enjoy in normal times. And boy, I'm ready for all those normal times to come back. I, I agree, except I, I like one thing that I want to keep, even when, you know, the quote unquote normal is back. And that's the Jen Hale method of interviewing, which is the six foot long <laughs> mic. I don't know if you know this, but you're the first person that really got to interview using that. Everyone was like, this is kind of weird. But now it happens in every NBA game and you were the, the guinea pig for the six foot boom mic. I never thought about that, Andrew, but I guess you're right because we were the first to come back. Yeah, it was very odd. Um, and that was awkward because you think six feet isn't really all that far, but with the music in the arena, because they didn't want it to sound dead, it was actually hard for the player or coach to hear me and hard for me to hear them back. So I always felt like I was leaning towards them, shouting, struggling <laughs> to hear what they were saying to make sure, you know, I didn't miss the correct follow-up question. Um, yeah, that was an adventure. That was really different. And it, we all kept forgetting. And thankfully, somebody in the circle would, would remind this, you know, hey, step back, because your, your initial instinct is to line up like you used to line up. Um, and so we had to keep <laughs> had to keep moving back from each other. It probably is there wasn't too that, easy. Go ahead, Joey, you go. Oh, Joey, you're up. I, I was just going to say, is there anything, is, is, yeah, it's my turn. Is, <laughs> is there anything that, that you did in the bubble with, with TBT that you have implemented and will continue to implement that you think is like, oh, without, without, the, without COVID, I wouldn't have been doing this. Oh, that's a great question. Um, certainly, I, I'm more aware of, I guess, 
cleanliness. Um, I, I never would have thought to clean my desk. I've never cleaned my phone so much. Um, I, I think I will likely continue that <laughs> even when COVID is over, maybe not quite as hardcore, but I realized I should probably be doing that each game. Um, in terms of interviewing, it has made me work harder to maintain the relationships. So um, I try to make sure I call somebody in my Rolodex every day and check in now. Just how are you? I don't ha need to have a game with them or just just to reach out and have that contact. And I, I probably should have been doing that all along. So I, yeah, that's probably something I will continue to do because um, I think it's a great reminder for, for all of us really, but especially for me that that hearing human voices, having that that one-on-one -on -one contact that isn't necessarily just a text or just an email, uh, it really does make a difference. We'll let you brag a little bit. Who are some of those uh, people you're reaching out to? Are we talking like LeBron? <laughs> like, hey, can't wait for the next Lakers-Pelicans game? Who, who are you calling? Not LeBron, no. Um, but a lot of coaches, um, some former players from the Pelicans, some current players for the Pelicans. Uh, and really, it's the coaching staffs I, I dive deep on. Um, big congratulations, big shout out. One of our former assistants, Chris Finch, just got the head coaching nod in Minnesota for the T-Wolves. So was very excited for him, of course. Had to reach out to him and, and chat with him a little bit. And then um, even also the owners nowadays, um, I think with everybody being so isolated, folks are craving that, 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 that contact. So um, on the football side, I talked to Arthur Blank quite a bit uh, with the Atlanta Falcons. They've had a major overhaul front office and um, coaching staff. They ended up bringing in a guy from the Saints. Terry Fontenot is their new general manager. So making sure I keep tabs with him, uh, Michael Bidwell over with the Arizona Cardinals. I think they're a interesting study football wise too, because another team that, man, you see me out like you're right there. Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, you need one more piece, one more key piece. So just, just maintaining those relationships. Um, it, it's, I took it for granted when I would see people in person, but of course, when you're in a game setting, you guys know it's, it's hey, how are you? Things are good, okay without ever really getting what's really going on in your life. Yeah. And those phone calls afford that opportunity. Yeah, we do that with, uh, with Ott Elmore and Joe Johnson. Those are our two go-tos to check <laughs> in with, make sure they're doing well. But speaking of those two guys, we, we love Ott Elmore, obviously, because he's just walking, <laughs> walking content. My question to you, who, who's, you know, TBT first, and then you can do overall. But who, who from last year in the bubble was your favorite, you know, post-game interview, halftime interview, and you can't say Odd Elmore? You got uh, see, you took the good one. Um, I, I agree with you. He was internet gold, right? Oh, my gosh. So fantastic. Um, he's in law school now, right? I, I can't wait to see him <laughs> doing opening or closing arguments somewhere. I, I, I just want to come watch for, for entertainment's sake. His quote about I play at the Y was just Oh, wow. he said that to us. He said, we got him. We got him. You, you had some, I have to give y'all credit. You had some fabulous interviews. Those you guys are obviously that. very comfortable with you. And that, that speaks a lot to your personality and the time on task you've put in to make them feel comfortable with you. Well, that's coming from a legend. So we appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, favorite interview. Jeez. I guess... You know, I think I'm going to have to go with um, the Sideline Cancer crew uh, just because the cause was so personal. And, you know, they, they, they were not supposed to do nearly as well as they did when you look at the seating. And it was so raw and emotional for them. And, you know, hats off to Golden Eagles. I, I'm so excited for Travis Diener and crew that they won. But I will admit, part of my heart broke for sideline cancer that they didn't win and didn't win the money. And um, I, I thought their interviews um, were, were very, it was another level. There, there was another element involved to not only lose a friend to cancer so young, um, but be willing to donate so much of your potential winnings to fight it for other people. Um, I loved that and I loved the emotion, the true emotion they brought to uh, last year's tournament. I thought it was really something special.
How about anybody with the with the Pelicans? Because we, I guess, we should we ask that side <laughs> of the coin as well. Who's your favorite guy in the Pelicans to interview right now? Favorite guy to interview? Um, Brandon Ingram probably always get well. Brandon Ingram and JJ Redick, they give the most um, thought out answers. They really, really consider what you're saying, um, and it, it, as opposed to you know just kind of the canned, we played hard thanks to my teammates type of answer. <laughs> um, but in terms of you never know what they're going to say. Oh my gosh, where is he going to go with this? This could get really interesting. That would have to be Josh Hart uh, <laughs> or Stephen Adams. Stephen Adams is is sneaky, quirky, and hysterical. And I don't know if it's the New Zealand accent. I feel like he can say things that other players might not be able to get away with just because of that accent and maybe the the, the language difference. Uh, it's quite hysterical. He, he's had some good zingers here lately. When you look like uh, Aquaman, you can get away with a few extra things. Exactly, exactly. You really so, do have a great crew, now that I'm thinking about it. Like, that's a that, – talk about content. That's a, and you didn't even mention the best young player in the NBA, Zion. So, it's, it's pretty crazy. I, J.J. Reddick's got to have great answers because he's on the other side of it all the time because he's a podcast guy, so he gets it. That's, that's interesting. They, I would assume that he would give well-thought-out answers because that's what he would want extremely well thought out and we'll take it in you know different directions that you didn't think of necessarily so it's it's always fun I always learn something um when he explains something he truly teaches you and and I'm like oh okay even after 10 years of doing this um he still takes me inside to to other layers and other thought processes and and it's it's great and and yes to your point I think also because of his podcast he gets what makes a good answer um, in a way that other players, you know, just because they haven't experienced the flip side, uh, don't understand. So, yeah, he's he's always fun. He's always good. J.J. Redick obviously would be good in the Elam ending because, you know, threes are more than two. And anytime you got a guy that's going to make a large amount of threes, it's going to be helpful. Something we want to do with you. So, Joey and I did this. It hasn't been released yet, but we'll say ours and then after – or we'll say ours after you say yours. We went through and we kind of picked three – NBA all-star reserves that we would want to see in the Elam ending. And we're going to potentially get to see it with the all-star game. And starters, uh, any, any NBA all-star. Oh yeah. We did any of the all-stars. Yeah. Okay. So Are you going to tell yours? me yours or you want me no, to No, you got to, you got to go first. You go I got to go first. Okay. Um, you know, I want to say Zion, of course, um, the three is certainly not his hallmark. However, I will remind folks in his NBA debut versus the Spurs, he was shut down <laughs> that entire first half. And if you remember the national commentary, it was, oh, see, he's not nearly as good as he should have been. This was a lot of hype. He's not living up to it. And then he explodes for double-digit scoring in the third quarter, and four of them were consecutive threes. Mm -hmm. So he has it in him. <laughs> To shoot the three ball, it just is not his hallmark yet. Um, but I will say, boy, he comes alive uh, under pressure. He's so used to it for such a young player. It doesn't phase him one bit. In fact, I think it feeds him. So maybe not necessarily from three, but Elam ending time, where it's like, go, go. And that one-on-one -on -one competition, I think he would be really good. Really good. Um I would also go with, obviously, LeBron James. Um, he's kind of the definition, right, of, of That's bold. saving it all up. That's bold. He's, he's not that good. That's a bold. <laughs> uh, I, I think he saves it. I think he's obviously older. He saves his energy for when he needs it. But how often have you seen him come back and take over a game at the very end? You thought it was competitive, and then he goes, really? Here you go. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. I got this. I still think he has it in him. Would he put it on display for an all-star game as opposed to a, a championship game seven? Uh, I don't know about that, but uh, we're going to go so with this hypothetical world. So uh, if there were, if, if he thought that it was enough to play for, I think he could definitely put on a show. And then after that, gosh, I would have to go how about a Bradley Beal. I mean, top score in the NBA, right? Um, so many of those all-stars could be fantastic in the Elam ending, but I'll go with those three. I have a very a similar list. three years. Yeah. I was going to say it's a great list and not all it's great because it's similar to Andrews. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, really? I'll tell you mine, but first 
I want to show you something because you'll appreciate this more than the average person. Not everyone has a uh, LeBron and D Rose Cavs picture hanging <laughs> in their rooms. So I, I figured That's you'd phenomenal. appreciate that. Play no atten- pay phenomenal. no attention to my uh, dirty laundry on the bed. I'm, I'm <laughs> but COVID, we all have it. Yeah. So my three, all right, I'm with you with Zion because anytime you got the highest, you know, field goal percentage from an all star, you're going to want Number that. One guys. In the paint. Exactly. So I'm, I'm taking Zion. I'm with you. The game against the, the uh, Celtics a few days ago when he had the clutch basket at the end, like that, that's what we're talking about right there. Yep. And then I didn't take, I didn't take LeBron just because I love LeBron. So I figured I'd mix it up a little bit because I'm always talking <laughs> about LeBron. And I went with KD because there's really and anything with KD, you can't go wrong. I agree. And then similar to your Brad Beal pick, I went with the hometown guy, had to take Zach Levine. He's been, you know, Mr. Fourth Quarter this year. His shooting's been unbelievable. So those were my three, similar to yours, Zion, Zach Levine, KD. You can make a case for so many, you know? That's why they're in the All-Star game. Except Rudy Gobert. I'd say not Rudy Gobert probably would be one of the (laughs) best. No, absolutely not. Yeah, that's that's true. I, I had three different guys. I went with a different route. I went the point guard route because they're the guys with the ball at the end of the game. They're the, the decision makers. And it just so happens that I picked two Steph of the Steph Curry players. in there? <laughs> we didn't do Steph. You we, didn't? Yeah. We, we kind of mutually agreed to not do LeBron or Steph because they were like kind of obvious, even okay. though he is too. But um, my three were first and foremost, Damian Lillard, who I think is probably – the first guy everybody should think about just because Elam ending is synonymous with Dame time. It is the same exact thing. He's going to hit that point. He's going to hit threes from everywhere. He's so clutch. And I just selfishly love watching him play. He's one of my favorite players ever. Um, you can make an argument. He should have been in a starter, not a reserve. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. The next guy, um, James Harden is if it's not KD, he's the most unguardable player in the NBA. So it's a pretty simple way if you roll the ball out on the court and you say who do you want to score eight straight points in a game one of the first guys you think about is going to be him well and it's in Atlanta and he's going to want to get out of the arena as quick as possible so <laughs> that, that might be another it's reason to yeah exactly that's a good point I did not that didn't come into my thought process but the last guy we got to give some love to the TBT man himself Chris Paul um, another one of the most clutch guys in the NBA makes it seems like if he has to take a tough shot he's going to make a tough shot and so again probably when it comes down to it there's only a few guys that I I would want the ball in in his hand more than Chris Paul so I'm going to take him with my last pick but you see the theme point guards guys you want the balls in their hand like they're just they're just tough shot takers and tough shot makers it's important I, I have to agree with you on Dame and if I could go back I would steal that one too because what he has done for Portland Given all their absences, he's the only one. He puts them on his back night in and night out. It it really, to me, right, I I know that you have to have a certain record to even be considered. But, gosh, to me, he's MVP at the moment. I know everybody says LeBron, but LeBron has so much more help than Dame at the moment. Um, I just really think what he's doing is super impressive. I'm big-time team Damian Lillard. I cannot – I. Can't say enough good things about him. And the fact that he wants to stay in Portland, too. It's just it's a whole different right. conversation. Jen, I think we uh, dropped the ball on something. I just uh, pulled up your Twitter, and it looks like it's your birthday today. Is that true? <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> well, ha- happy birthday. Why are you doing our silly podcast Thank on your you. birthday? Because <laughs> I'm getting ready to go to dinner after this, and I figured I better do it before. <laughs> Oh man, I we we feel kind of bad now. So so we'll, we'll do a, bad. we'll do a few quick questions. I want to ask you about your organization sideline pass because I was reading uh, a little bit you. about it and I think it's really really cool. But I wouldn't be able to do the justice that you would. So my question is: quick little sideline pass, what it's all about, how people can get involved because I do think it's really really cool. Yeah, thank you. You're awesome for bringing it up. Um, yeah, we uh, started this six years ago, and it's an organization to mentor academically excellent, but financially challenged young girls. So uh, COVID has changed a lot of what we do, but in in normal years, uh, we try to do one outreach a month, something fun paired with something educational. So, you know, what's a checking account? How do you open one? What's a credit score? 
or something uh, health-wise or something um, job-related in terms of how do you do a resume, what makes a good interview, and then you pair that with rock climbing or or uh, roller skating, or we've been to the gyms where you know you get to jump in all the different trampolines and bounce houses. Uh, so that's that's really fun, and it's a really hands-on way that we really want to help make sure the next generation is is prepared to capitalize um, lessons they're kind of missing. One of our most special groups, we work a lot with kids in group foster care homes and shelters. So that with COVID we have been able to maintain. So we did Valentine's Day gifts for them. We'll do Easter baskets. We'll do um, obviously Christmas gifts. Um, and then for graduations, we'll take them shopping for, the state doesn't cover things like the dress to go underneath your cap and gown type of thing or your prom dress. So we'll, we'll take them shopping for those, those types of things. And then we also do several scholarships to help get kids out of failing schools. The education system here in New Orleans is getting better um, very proud of the strides it's made, but still for those academically excellent students, um, it doesn't always challenge them enough. So we figure if we can put them in a, in a academically excellent school young and get them ready for college, then they'll crush college and, and, you know, they won't be so far behind when they start. So that's essentially what we are six years, six years strong. And, um, just a bunch of women from the greater New Orleans area, a bunch of uh, players' wives and coaches' wives have pitched in throughout the years, and it's, it's been really fun. That's awesome. Sidelinepass.org, if anybody wants to find out more about it or help with the Easter baskets, and we're also doing a, a food drive coming up. Awesome. Awesome. That, that's, that's amazing. It's a great way to kind of uh, wrap this up. The last thing that we want to ask you, and it's something that we ask every guest that comes on the show, do you have any questions for us? Any burning questions that you've been dying Ooh. to us? We'll turn the tables and let you interview us for a second. Yeah, I should be prepared for that because I listen to you guys, especially during the tournament, because you do have such good interviews and you do always ask that. Um, okay, for you, what can we expect from this year's TBT? Uh, planning is so hard right now, not knowing will we be fine? Will, will there be you know, uh, immunity that, that it can be a full go in normal sense, or are we looking at a truncated TBT this year? Give us some inside scoop. Andrew, you want to, you want to do that without spoiling anything? <laughs> yeah. So the inside scoop, and this is from what we've been told, which is very little because we are bottom of the TBT totem pole, but we <laughs> will be having a TBT. The hope is that there's fans. We know about, uh, 12 to 15 of the teams that are for sure applying by the time this comes out uh by the time this comes out we're announcing tomorrow but it's yesterday when you're listening to this <laughs> that the uh purdue team men of Mackey, are back so there's some breaking news for you but yeah you know as far as we know there will be tbt but will there be jen hale on the sidelines that's that's the real question absolutely uh, at least there are burning ears here wanting to know that question, the answer to that question. <laughs> I will be there if, if you guys will let me. Absolutely. If protocols allow, um, I wouldn't miss it. I love it. It's, it's, I look forward to it every summer. Well, if we have any say, you'll, you'll be back, but we don't have a whole lot of say, if any say <laughs> at all. But if we did, you'll be back and we'll bring you a birthday gift because we feel Aww. bad that we made you jump in a Zoom with us on your birthday. This is fun. Are you kidding? I love this stuff. Well, we really do appreciate it. Yeah, glad you had fun. Happy, happy birthday. And please get out of here as fast as you can because <laughs> <laughs> you don't deserve this on your birthday. Wait, are you going to Cafe <laughs> Du Monde for your birthday? No Cafe Du Monde, um, <laughs> but we are eating local. Uh, always support those local restaurant owners and local small business owners. Uh, we're going to a place called Sophia tonight, um, which, is, which is done after Sophia Loren and it's really great Italian. Wait, I want to show you something real quick before you go. Because I was just in New Orleans a few <laughs> okay. weeks ago. And oh, were you? Well, thanks for looking me up. I appreciate it. I apologize. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I did have to go to Cafe Du Monde. You can't really see. I guess that kind of looks weird. But I did go and I got. No, I see it now. Yeah, I my see the first sugar. Ever. Yeah. What did you think? What's your rating? 10 out of 10 exceeds expectations. Joe, you got it. Oh, you've had it. We talked about this, Joey. Yeah. What? Yeah. 
Jen, my sophomore, no, junior year in college, we played in the Smoothie King Arena against North Carolina. And um, my uncle came in for the game because he loves New Orleans. And he got me and my teammates literally a, a, a thousand beignets. We, I had, I brought them home. I had like two on the plane. I had like three in my apartment still after it was, I'm still eating. <laughs> That's phenomenal. But let me tell you what you got to do next. Next time you're in that situation, you end it with a beignet fight and everybody is covered in powdered sugar at the end of it. We had so many in college. It was ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> Good to know. We don't know the ins and outs of, of the New Orleans <laughs> That's good, though. Every day we learn a little bit more, it seems like. So it's perfect. <laughs> All right, Jen. Well, we appreciate this. This has been above and beyond. Uh, looking forward to maybe even getting together during TBT. So if, if you're there and we're there. What a novel we'll concept, be, huh? Yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. A little human interaction, maybe. Who knows? Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. And keep up the great work. You're crushing it. Of course, appreciate, appreciate that. Happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday. Thank you. Bye, guys.